Hey, and welcome to the Solid Verbal. Now would be a perfect time to consider subscribing. Yeah, that little subscribe button for year-round premium college football content. That's it. Here's the video. Enjoy. Subscribe. Yeah. Next team. Next team. A and M. Full on freak out. Full full on freak out. And okay. I mean, two dynamics at play here. The recruiting has been strong. The talent is there. The freak out, I think, comes due to the fact that the talent development has not necessarily amounted to much on offense. Right. Um, you see a lot of the same stubborn qualities out of Jimbo. Um, you know, we know it just from the calls and from the emails and the the feedback that we get from AM fans that it just feels like there's another gear there that Jimbo has not tapped into it either out of stubbornness or something else that maybe we can't put our finger on. So this season has really turned rather quickly. It has turned from one that, what we were talking preseason, could they win the SEC West, into not, are they going to go to a bowl? I think AM's is good enough to go to a bowl game, but like, what does this team actually look like? Is this an eight-win team again for Jimbo Fisher? Is there any hope? beyond this season, even with more talent coming in, that they're going to be able to build towards something. They're going to be able to get aligned and make this thing better moving forward. Um, you know, you can only play the excuse for so long that the talent's not there, that the talent's too young, or that we're still implementing our system. At some point soon, it's going to be put up a shut up time. Interestingly, when we talk about the Matt Rule thing, right, I would expect on some level just go to message board geniuses. Any of those great <laughs> Twitter accounts that yep. take a look at message boards, I would suspect that you're going to see texags.com talking about guys like Rule. You know, somebody else who's already gotten it done done in the state of Texas, a talent developer, what have you. You know, imagine what he could do with this talent pool. You're going to start to see some pressure like that if we don't get some indication soon that things are going in a different direction at AM. So I'm if I'm a fan, I feel almost a little bit rudderless. You know, it's not a total tire fire, but I just don't know what the future looks like, and that scares me. All right. All of the, the things that you mentioned, Ty, 100% correct. I know. I, <laughs> good. So we agree. Um, Texas A&M is fascinating. So they have not been incredible against the run, as, we, as we've seen kind of all year long uh, against teams like App State and now most recently Alabama. And... I mean, the concern to me is the quarterback thing that Jimbo Fisher is I to say like, oh, to to a, assign him as like the QB whisper is not accurate. He hasn't been that in a long time since Jameis Winston, essentially. But to say that like they are screwing up in the same ways or disappointing in the same ways year over year that like, yes, Kellen Mond had some good moments, right? That like he was a playmaker. He improved over the course of his time there. But the offense was never truly dangerous against the best teams. And so there's no clear reason, unless you're like a, a Connor Wegman is so good that he will overcome how he's coached or something like that, that you should full on freak out because Texas A&M against the run on defense, throwing the ball on offense, that there hasn't been, we're five years in, are we not? Mm -hmm. Five years into the Jimbo Fisher experience. Even a, throw the money away, which is what Texas A&M is doing. Uh, throw the money element aside, you look for improvement. They've recruited in acquiring talent. The roster is as strong as it's ever been in College Station. But the manner in which they're losing, like the best of Texas A&M by and large is we almost beat this excellent team. That's like kind of the highlight. Um, they beat Alabama last year. They've hung with really, really good teams. But their lows are still so disappointingly low that it's hard to see. They're spending money on assistance. They're doing all the things that you would like them to do, but it's hard to see things changing. It almost seems just like an internal culture thing. I think Kirk Herbstreet talked about this, where it's just like there's something off that they're week to week not playing like they expect to compete and beat the best, and it's hard to reverse that. So yep. I'm going to say full-on freakout. I'm with you. I'm with you. 